Brigadier General Levin Hung. Throughout the Antelope series on this channel, he is the one on the ground in command of the South Vietnamese soldiers in the city, while his American advisors directed the air support. He had been in the war for almost two decades at that point, graduating from Tuduk Military Academy in 1955 and starting off as a second lieutenant. Eventually, in 1971, he was given command of the 5th Division when it eventually faced the North Vietnamese Easter Offensive in 1972. Was General Le Văn Hung a good general? The South Vietnamese community knows him as the hero of An Lop. He is the one who moved his 5th Division headquarters from the safe location of Lai Khe over to the soon-to-be-surrounded city of An Lop and effectively led from the front, facing almost three different communist divisions. He vowed that while I am still alive, An Lop still stands. Eventually, the city survived the siege. Lam Quang Thi, another South Vietnamese general who wrote Hell in An Lop, reports that General Hung was one of the very best regimental commanders in four corps. He additionally concludes that Hung, undoubtedly, was the man who was instrumental in holding together the fabric of the defense of An Lop against vastly superior enemy forces and in spite of a deteriorating relationship with his American advisor. Lieutenant General Ngo Gang Chung, considered by American officers to be South Vietnam's indisputable best general, directly addresses General Hung as the hero of An Lop in his Easter Offensive monograph. The South Vietnamese people, in general, view General Le Văn Hung very favorably. How about the Americans? How did they view the general? The first senior American advisor in the battle, Colonel William Miller, definitely did not think highly of General Hung. Andrade wrote that on the eve of the battle in Three Corps, Miller's perceptions of Hung were more sharply etched. Numerous other entries in his book describe Hung as devastated. Miller thought that Hung would probably be happy as long as he could sit and do nothing, even if the entire country burned around him in the meantime. In Will Banks' The Battle of An Lop, he wrote about numerous negative views of General Levin Hung, with only one slightly positive one. With Wilbanks and Andrade heavily relying on Miller's assessment of Hung, Hung is an incompetent officer. As stated numerous times during the series, Colonel Miller and General Hung's relationship was very poor, even before the battle. In contrast to Colonel Miller's assessment of General Hung, his replacement, Colonel Ulmer, was far more positive. Colonel Ulmer reported that Hung never buckled, though he was clearly very concerned. Andrade recounts Almer being impressed that Hung was clearly in command. His attitude towards General Hung was even improved after the battle ended, saying he was simply outstanding. He and the likes of him will save the country. It's clear that this is the exact opposite of Miller's assessment, but it's very important to note that Colonel Almer was also the dead opposite of Miller personality-wise. Colonel Miller was very passionate, emotional, and moody, while Colonel Omer was extremely technical and reserved. He numbered his paragraphs in military fashion and stated messages matter-of-factly in reports. He was objective and technical to the point that he was one of the key officers assigned to write a study outlining professionalism in the army in direct response to the failure of morale and reason that led to the Min Lai massacre. Colonel Omer would eventually reach the rank of a three-star lieutenant general. To truly assess Hung's performance, we must understand a topic that is key to this analysis. Culture The Americans were trying so hard to recreate the South Vietnamese military after its own image that it ran headfirst into a severe culture clash. Vietnam, for a couple millennia, was a Confucian country. To understand and properly analyze the Vietnamese generals, both North and South, as well as Chinese, Taiwanese, and Korean generals, the East Asian attitude towards its own generals must be understood compared to the Western attitude. Simply put, the Western general is allowed to fail sometimes, while the Eastern general is absolutely not. In the West, famous generals Rommel, Montgomery, and Napoleon lost their share of battles. However, they are still very highly regarded. In the case of all three, they still retained their command and continued to succeed afterwards. This is the attitude that Western commanders have. You can be set back in certain scenarios, but the overall result needs to be victory. However, in the East, when given a duty by the Emperor, you either always succeed or die trying. 
Otherwise, you will either be executed or stripped of your command and exiled. A famous example is that of General Ma Su and his commanding Prime Minister Zhuge Liang during the Three Kingdoms period. Zhuge Liang was in control of Shu Han and needed to conquer Cao Wei before it got too powerful. In this chance, Sub-Commander Ma Su failed and was forced to retreat, which then ruined the campaign. Zhuge Liang was forced to execute Ma Su, but since he was commander himself, demoted himself from the position of Prime Minister. He was fortunate enough to be the most powerful man in Shu Han and was not executed. But this example goes to show, in East Asian or Confucian cultures, being a commander is absolute. You either succeed or you die. It is because of this cultural difference that so many South Vietnamese generals were viewed to be completely detached from their command. To show an example to their troops, there is no fear, no emotion, total control. Each decision must be good, which is why South Vietnamese generals always waited or hesitated. Even General Ngo Quang Trung, who many American officers regard to be the best general South Vietnam could offer, was described as a quiet man with a stooped, paper-thin physique. Zhuang chain smoked cigarettes and always seemed to be concentrating on something besides the matter at hand. He lacked the hard persona and unflinching demeanor of his more colorful American counterparts. His temperament was clearly that of an East Asian general, reserved and trying to reach perfection with each decision. Even then, his advisors absolutely trusted him and American officers clearly stated that they would trust him to command an American division. General Hung was not regarded as highly as General Chuang, but his demeanor is the very same. He is an East Asian Confucian commander. Colonel Omer clearly understood this. The unfavorable view of General Hung comes from the very harsh personality clash between him and Colonel Miller. As the main source on the ground for both Wilbanks, the Battle of Anlop, and Andrade's, America's last Vietnam battle, this paints a more negative view of General Hung. Wilbanks doesn't put any of Omer's view of Hung in his book, other than that Omer was prepared to give him the benefit of the doubt. However, Wilbanks definitely put plenty of Miller's criticisms against Hung in the book. Lam Guangti concludes that Hung liked to act on his own and was not eager to listen to the advice of his counterparts. Andrade concludes the same, that Hung disliked overbearing Americans who wanted the war fought according to American views. The clash in culture is absolutely apparent when Colonel Miller, right before the battle, suggested that Hung relinquish his command to Colonel Nyut. Western officers view the change of command as reasonable, but General Lum succinctly phrases this suggestion as an unacceptable loss of face that would have adversely affected the morale of the troops fighting in Anlop. To lose their commander would be very unsettling for the 5th Division men. It is a clash of cultures that unfortunately tainted the relationship of South Vietnamese generals with their advisors, and this is just one of the examples. Another clear instance is when Hung refused Miller's advice to concentrate the 5th Division in Lop Ninh. Miller reported soon after that Hung was paralyzed in making decisions. However, on assessment of the battle, and how long it took for the 21st and 25th Divisions to arrive and relieve An Lop, it's a critical question to consider whether this advice was reasonable in the first place for two points. Whether the 5th Division even had the time to do this before Lop Ninh was hit, and how much longer it would take for the 21st to arrive. If the 21st were forced to proceed all the way to Lop Ninh instead of An Lop, they would have to push through both the 7th Pavan Division and the 5th and 11th Division concentrated at An Lop. Whether the decision was reasonable, the two men clearly disliked each other. However, this instance was used in the books as proof that Hung was incompetent. General Long Peng Ti's book was not a major source while making the series, but because General Lum was able to consult far more Vietnamese sources and individuals operating around General Hung during the battle, rather than translated documents, it is very clear that General Le Van Hung was quite active in communicating, contacting, and maneuvering troops more so than Miller had observed. However, whether General Hung was a poor or excellent general during the Battle of An Lop, he is definitely an honorable one. Out of all the Vietnamese generals present during the collapse of South Vietnam, he tried to plan a defense of four corps with his commander, General Nguyen Quan Nam, even while Saigon was falling. Both took their lives when the plan completely failed in the shame of defeat. Truly, he is a Confucian general a Vietnamese general to behold.